three. Yeah, there we go. We are alive. This is the first time I've done this. So we just finished recording the episode. I guess it just it, it sticks on YouTube now. So like this is this is what's gonna stick, even though there might not be any people in here yet. Uh, but basically, we are going to talk about hitting. Uh, if if you probably look like one video back, we'll have the full episode of me and you talking about everything. But Griffin Conine joining me not only to talk about his swing, but to talk about some of the goats and some of the goat swings, and also just like Andre Galarraga. So I'm excited to just nerd out about hitting with you for about 15, 20 minutes, Griff. Uh, thank you for hopping on. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna start- These are some of the like, cool videos to watch all the time. Yeah. How often are you watching like all of oh. these types of guys hit? Uh, all the time, all the time. Like whether it's via like Instagram account, like I have, I throw, I follow like some cool Instagram, like throwback accounts that like they follow, like, or like they post like, uh, videos from like the nineties, like hitters from the nineties that are all like, they post a lot of like really cool, super underrated dudes. So like you wouldn't remember really, um, that were like really good. And like Galarraga, I think popped up on there a few weeks ago. So I was like, all right, like, somewhat close to hall of fame numbers um maybe if like people get a few more like good years he had like four he had three he had a batting title one year he hit 370 one year like he had a free career uh and like his swing is really really good so like that's cool to like when i yeah i was like all right i mean this makes sense like he had a really really this is the result and he's like really strong let's let's start with him because your dad, your your dad has mentioned his home run at at the old Marla Joe Robbie pro player, whatever the hell you want to call it, and his his home run there, I think, is one of the furthest hit balls in like baseball history. I won't take any other answer. And your dad also says he thinks it's one of the furthest hit balls he's ever seen. Uh, let's talk about this swing because I want you to just kind of explain why this is a swing that you okay. look at. And why it's something that, like, what does he do here that is just something that you are zeroing in on as a hitter? Yeah. All right. Well, I think what's interesting is, like, he's, like, and something that, that, that like, I feel like I got into trouble doing last year is, like, I almost, I wish we had both views of like the front two, because like what I'm trying to explain is like Barry Bonds talks about like his chest, like being lined up with the pitcher while he's hitting. So like, you wouldn't think like, you're not like standing there like this, like looking at the pitcher, obviously like you're like turned. Um, But I think there's, there's a way to do it the right way where like, it almost is like your chest and like turn as much as you can while you can still like have this being pointed straight. And I think the problem I got into was like, I got so like, I wanted to load, load, load that like I would load here and like my eyes, you can't even see the one eye. Like I was like, I was looking like my vision was off. Like I was obstructing my own vision by like trying to rotate and load. And I think like Galarraga is like, I don't know, you can see like he, he everything stays so straight. Like it's like all his energy is going this way instead of like rotating around and then coming off. Like you can see like, even like if uh, look at his front foot, I think that's a good way to put it. It's like his front foot, his toe is pointed like right at the pitcher the whole time. Not that like maybe not right at the pitcher, but like, like it's forward. And Griffey did the same thing too. And Bonds did a similar thing too. Whereas like I don't know, I think I think if you get to the point where like your toes are pointed towards the other dugout um during your load that just becomes a lot to unwind. Like when, when he lands, like it's already, it, it's such a clean path. So like all his energy is like, he's holding the back hip the entire time. And he has like such a clean path for his, his bat to fire through. And like, I don't know, he's an awesome swing. So going into like how, how little. Uh, he rotated. This one. Yeah. There's, there's the goat. So you talk about where he's at right here. Man. Is that what you're talking about with the chest? Yeah. 
Sort of, yeah. I think I think he did a really good job of like like look at his his finishing position almost like says a lot of it. Like he's like almost like running down the line. But at the same time, like you didn't fly open at all. Like a lot of it's just like being able to separate your hips, like, but also at the same time maintaining the tension on the backside. Like, like everything's going forward instead of, instead of, you know, off to, and then Griffey was the same way. Like when he finished his swing, he was already in a position to run to first, which is like, that's just getting your hips like all the way all the way through and like obviously like these are you wouldn't really see that as much like on a pitch away because like you're not going to spin all the way through it um as much as you would like a pitch in i assume this pitch is probably middle middle in and he's turning on it Um, and we always talk about the back hip and so the position that he's in right here right like this is something that i know you have really been focusing on um and of course we all want to be like barry bonds but it's something that you've really been focusing on. And we talked about it on the podcast a little bit on, on the call up is, is staying in that back hip and bonds is a guy that did it as well as anybody here, right? Like at the point of contact where he's at with his lower half is absurd. And, and I've seen you take some hacks in the cage already, you know, before uh, you had to go down for a little bit with, with the ham eight situation, but n- before you went down and I know you already have some more things that you're excited to, to kind of implement in the cage in the next week, that was something that looked like night and day to me um, from what your swing looked like during the season was how much you were you're swinging off that back leg uh, compared to something before. Can, can you talk about it? I know you said it a little bit already on the podcast, but for the, some of those that might be with us right now, you know, what is, what is the importance of being on that back hip and staying on that back hip? Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. I think, I think, and it was kind of goes along with what I was talking about just before with Galarraga about how like last season, like I would, I became so rotational that like I'd rotate and like, I might like when I got to this position, like, yeah, my back hit was probably pretty loaded correctly. But what would happen is like, I would, I would turn, my body would turn itself out of it. Meaning like, as soon as I started my hip, my, my swing, instead of like, instead of hitting through, the back hip tension and, and, and using it, I would like lose it. If you don't use it, you lose it. You ever heard that? So like, uh, yeah, it was usually in like, regards uh, to like Spanish. Like, I, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, but I was almost like, I, um, I was like, I was, I was going this way. Like I was rotating this way instead of, instead of having my energy going like through the ball. And that, that's like, that comes from like, the loading your back hip correctly, but also like releasing it correctly. Like if, if you load it and then you lose it in your forward move to the ball, then like there's no point in loading it in the first place. And I think I, I kind of got in the trap of like, I wanted to feel really loaded up, but then at the same time I was like, and you hear hitting coaches sometimes say like, you have to get off the back side, like get off, like you're too stacked, which is like, I think I think if you can learn to hit on your backside, like that's how you do it. That's how Bonds did it, like, and that's why like if you play like from here and you watch like his front foot, like how little weight he has on his front foot, and just see it slide back. And obviously, like yeah, Barry Bonds, greatest ever, sure. Um, and and not and many people are doing are doing that move, but I guarantee you, like all the guys that like obviously the use both legs when they hit they, they land you can't hit off one leg but i think it's 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 very common misconception that like they're 50 50 with their weight when they land i don't think they're 50 50 at all like even mike trout who's like a leg kick guy his foot's landing sure but like you can easily if you try if you stand up and put put like 70 percent of your weight in your back leg and then put like 30 on on your front leg but like have it look like they're 50 50 you know what i mean like so you're not like leaning you're not leaning with one side your your everything looks like it's even, but if you look beneath the surface, you'd be like, all right, well, I'm actually like, I'm way more on my backside. But it and- looks. Uh, David Ortiz talked about with, with a Rod about yeah. um, the egg. Like, and it, 
Yeah, and his, he would do his big leg kick, but he was like, I wanted to feel like I was, there was an egg beneath my front foot that I didn't want to crack. Like, that's how soft. And, like, you would never know that. But like, it looked like he's stomping the ground on TV. Like, with his, with his – like, it was just, like, such an aggressive leg kick. And that's, like, something that like, you could never – it's so hard to know that. Because, like, in the naked eye, like, you have no idea. It, it's funny because – Big leg kick gets to 50 50- yeah you know, like he actually that's all with him and timing but the whole time he's all in his back hip like loading 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 while the foot's up and even as it's going down that's the key is like i think a lot of people like if they leg kick when they go down that's when they get into trouble or like their their hip wants to wants to move forward wants to jump at the ball and they, they lose the tension because like you really have to like think about it you have to think you have to like dedicate territory to like all right i'm gonna maintain tension i want to feel that like holding while i'm while i'm dropping because that's the only way if you're not if you haven't been doing it your whole life which is like some you know one soto i bet has done his whole life he's gifted yeah. um but if you haven't just born you're not one soto or very bonds like you're gonna have to you're gonna have to dedicate a lot of mental energy to, to learning how to do it and like i'm starting to like i feel like i'm starting to crack that you know and it's not like i've never done it you know like and i've never cracked it i think like uh, obviously when i get hot like it, it happened naturally like it was just like through other factors like i would just like get really hot for a couple weeks where i was doing it really well um but i think like until you really learn how to do it well every time and repeat it that's when like you really unlock unlock it all the way and so your big focus in the sense. off season has been it's yeah, been finding a way finding a way to repeat it right like that's been your big focus through through the off season is like okay i know what i need to do now I know how much the, this is important to being able to repeat my swing. And when I was going right, these were the things that I was doing when I was going right. Now I understand what was working and how I was able to hit, as I mentioned on the podcast, 10 home runs in 13 games. Like that, You just can't do that unless you have everything working for you. But as you mentioned before, you couldn't quite figure out totally what was working for you you had some idea, but you didn't have the the total understanding of what was working for you totally when you were hot. And now you feel like you've been able to kind of get to the bottom of that. Would you say you, you talk about the weight being stacked more on the backside? There's guys now that I see in the big leagues and some of my favorite offensive prospects that the guys that have power like you do, or at least close to what you do, which is very few guys, but they start very pre-stacked onto their backside because they know like they don't need to do much to achieve that power. Uh, is that something that you've thought about? It's like starting with your weight kind of on the backside a little bit more. And also during the season, how often do you feel like you were closer to 50, 50 than 70, 30 favoring the backside? Yeah. From the those are both the cool I think, um, I think during the season, like I really, I didn't think I was, I didn't feel like I was on my backside much at all. Like I feel like I was, more 50 50 than anything which is like well i guess it's a bad way of putting it i would say like on my good power stretches that was when like i was in my back hip i get out and hitting off my backside and i think and i think what would happen is like they start to like they start to death or um situations where like they would alter how they pitch me and then that would kind of throw me off like i, I would start to like that's when I would lose it because I'd be like, I have this extra time now that like they're throwing slow breakers that like, I think I just got uncomfortable holding it that long. Like I was like, I was like, I need to go get it. And then like, as soon as you like make that move to like catch it out in front, that's when like, that's when, you know, it gets way harder to hit it. And I think like, that's just like the trap of, that's why hitting so hard. Cause like you, everything you want to do that you think you should do, you shouldn't do. And everything you think you shouldn't do, you probably need to do. So it's like it's all these opposites, like like a slow pitch you want to go out and get. No, like you have to work harder to hit it deeper. And then, yeah, you'll end up hitting it out in front. But like that's an end result of like trying to do the opposite of what you think you should do. Um, so I think like that's I think like I think not being open um, affected me in a way. So in my ability pitch- to like access the back hip the right way. I was open until this year. But yeah, go ahead. I was just to say, sorry, there's like a slight delay, which throws us off a little bit, but uh, the, this pitch here, this was 99 coming in. So you talk about yet yeah, being able to stay back and the breaking balls, like that was something that 
you know, letting it travel, picking it up, reading it and, and having your body in, under control, right? Body control is like, is the whole battle, right? But when it comes to 99, not only is it body control, but you got to be perfect, right? You, you got to be perfect. And everybody, as we talked about on the call up, everybody is elevating fastballs, especially if you are a guy like Vodnik that throws 99. Can you kind of take us through other than just like you put a good swing on it, how you were able to do this? I think this was 115, 114 uh, off the bat. How are you able to hit 99 elevated, which this was a pitch that gave you trouble during the year a lot. And the scouting report became give him hard stuff up down the stretch. You know, what What did you do well here and how are you going to be able to repeat this going into next year? Obviously, it's hard as hell to repeat all the time, but how are you going to be able to do it a little bit more? Yeah, I think uh, I think what I did here, and like it'd be cool if like I was telling you the swing before this um, was a terrible swing, and it was like he threw he he threw one ninety nine like probably middle almost like lower definitely lower better pitch to hit, um, and I was like I was under it I was late, it was like a super armsy swing, um, I was trying to like muscle up basically. Uh, cause I knew like he was a very fastball heavy guy. This wasn't like a three pitch guy. Like you knew you were getting gas. He had like a, a slider, didn't throw up much. Um, so you could pretty much gear up for it. So like I geared up for it, didn't go well. Um, and then I was like, I think I remembered the pregame work that we did. And like, we set up a fastball throwing hard and like the swings that I had had success on was like, I felt like I was like launching backwards almost like instead of going out. Cause when it's that hard, like, I didn't want to like go out to meet it out here. I wanted to like, I wanted to turn behind it almost and like let my arms do less in that way. Like, like if you're, if you're trying to get extended, like which I think is what I did on the swing before I was like, I'm going to get extended. I'm going to crush this. And I wanted to like get, I want to like push my arms out to like meet the ball at extension almost. And like, obviously you're not going to do that. Cause like, it's too hard. Like you're going to have to, you're going to meet it before then. But I think like the next swing, this swing committing to, just keeping the same angles, like not like no pushing, no, no extraneous movements. Like all I did was like, you know, everything loaded backside. And then I just like launched to this position and that's all it was. It was like this move to this. And that's all, that's all you have time for. It's 99. That's literally all you have time for. And then you extend through it. That happens after, but you literally just have time for these two. That's all. And that's what I did. Look at your front foot. We were talking about you know having the weight on the back side here. Look at your front foot right at the finish of the swing. Look where all your weight is. So these this is one of those instances, right, where where you were yeah. doing exactly what yeah, you yeah. know you need to do there now. You You're do you were doing exactly what you know you need to do now, but you didn't quite know exactly what that was at the time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've done like I know a lot of my swings. I've done that on a lot of swings before, like my heel, my toes coming up. And I knew that in that sense. But I think like, I think also a reason for that almost is like when um, like starting close, like starting more even last season, straight up with my feet instead of like an open stance was like uh, my hips being so tight as they are. Like it kind of, it's kind of like a force. Like you have to, you have to come off your, your back, your toes like that in a way, or else like you can't, I can't keep them down really. Like Barry in that video we watched, like his toes chain down the whole time. Like he had freakishly mobile hips. I'm, I'm sure. Um, which is like, you know, if that, if you have that as a hitter, like you, and you, if you, if you're watching this and you know that you have really mobile hips and like, it's a superpower, I would, I would love to have mobile hips and I, I work at it, but I know I'll never I'll never have Barry's hips, you know, but we do. We <laughs> Barry's can. hips. But I think that's like, that's definitely a marker. Of like, Barry's you think hips, it was the roids? You know, it was the roids that gave magical. him, it was the roids that gave him flexible hips, right? Yeah, for sure. That's how he discovered how to use his hips correctly. <laughs> it wasn't the roids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he had so, the, like, the most efficient hips ever. Yeah, his swing is just perfect. Well, speaking of of the like, this swing is like, it's great. Obviously, it's a home run. Off of this is this one's off Strider, right? This is off Spencer Strider. 
you don't even hit this one well. Like, this is bizarre. Can you, like, just talk about this? Not at all. Well, this is a good a good win day, a favorable win day um, in Pensacola, the bay. You know, you can see right there. So we had a good a good little jet stream. And, uh, yeah, I thought I thought I might have broken the bat on this one because he got it. He got it in there. I mean, he's throwing 95, 96. And that was, like, definitely on the inner half. I don't think it was in and but, like, and I think that was just, like, that's another thing that, like, if I could, like, run it back. I just, just I'm watching it right now. Like, I, my, my closed up setup was like, I was making it really hard to get to that pitch. Like, I can see myself just like working so hard to like rotate my hips through to like get to contact. It's when, like, like you're fighting yourself. I think if my foot is landing, I think if my front foot is landing six inches to the left or like the size of my foot to the left, that frees up so much room to work. Like, Barry always. Not Barry, but like he always landed almost open. Like his front foot got out of the way. His front foot got out of the way, and then his back, his back hit, his back foot fired. But he's like, if your if your front foot is in the way, like you can't fire all your energy. Like there's a block, and I feel like I blocked myself a lot of the year. Like here, like obviously this result ended up being okay, um, but that's a pitch that like you're supposed to pull that. You know, if you want to hit it on the barrel, it's gonna be really hard to like successfully do that when you don't have the wind helping you out, um, you know, in Pensacola. But, um, but yeah, that was, that was, that was probably, those are probably the best feeling. Like when you like think you got out and it ends up being a home run, that's pretty yeah, hard to, you thought beat. you were out there, right? Like that's you like had better you feeling than crushing. You fully thought you were out. Yeah, I was in right? like the, I was in the, give it a good round. I think there's two outs. So I was like ready to, Get my equipment to the first base coach. Head out to right. No, nope. All right, you get a free trip around the bags. You feel like you like feel like rob the bank or something. Like you're getting found money. It's like how did that's this a happen? great. That's a great analogy. That's good a great feeling. analogy. Really good feeling. That's a good question. Biggest weakness, arms. Biggest weakness as a player, uh, definitely ego. Definitely <laughs> huge ego that that got in the way of uh, relationship with teammates. <laughs> biggest strength, uh, despite the ego, situationally great situational hitter. Record for sack flies at our alma mater for high school broke my record. Great job getting the guy in from third with uh, with less than two. Dad, my dad would be really proud. That was uh, he led the league in sack flies once upon a time. Your dad that did. A, that's a great question, though. But yeah, I think that's he did. I think he had like twelve or fifteen one year. He was like number one. Yeah, your sack flies. Well, so were mine, to be honest. I think it was mostly just me just missing. Swing and <laughs> like it was me missing under. But when I missed under, it was a lazy fly ball that was just deep enough. When you missed under, it was like to the track. Guy catches it against the wall, and then somebody backpedals home from third, and that's how you got your sacrifices. Like you were trying to go yard every single high school at bat. I remember you were you were pissed when you hit a single. Like, you used to be like, upset if you hit a single. Yeah. Well, when you can throw almost, when you can throw it to like over the outfield fence, you you get pretty. <laughs> You feel like if I'm hitting, if I can throw it out that far, that's how small our high school field was. That's not to that's not to gas myself up, but it was so oh, small. Like you can see the you can count the on the outside fence. So I just like felt like I should every time I should uh, probably hit a home run. It, let's gas you up with the arm. Let's gas you up with the arm. I was in attendance. That was the most perfect. You put on a show for me and Adam Sachs here. This was a three home run weekend. God, that was, and this that's freaking like throw. That's the perfect ball to throw on as an outfielder. If you're an outfielder, yeah. you know that. One yeah. hop right to the chest, sets it up perfectly. Yeah, and I I got a good good momentum <laughs> behind that one. Vanfield didn't have to move. And and the catcher and skeleton. Oh. Yeah, that was Dustin Skelton from Mississippi State was catching that game, and he like he, he deked him. 
Like he did not move. Acting like I wasn't going to throw it. And then he got him. That guy was fast too. Edmund. Amer- oh, that's American. American. Yeah, American. yeah. He, I don't know if that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he was moving. Like the, the fact that that was, was a testament. It's like that was a rocket hit at me. Close. I was actually shocked that like he almost was safe. So one last, one last homer here. Not this one. Hold on. This one. This swing is so freakish. I don't even know how this gets out. I just want you to talk about it. Yeah, this is like... (laughs) I wish I would have done that more as far as like how I... Like, I was like, I didn't take really a swing like that all year. Like, I was so, like, one-dimensional in the sense that, like, I was always, like, a home run swing guy. And I think this swing was a result of – this is, like, my fourth game in double A, and, like, I had struck out in, like, nine out of 11 at-bats maybe. And I had two strikes here, and I was, like – it was, like, a breaking point. Like, I was, like, I can't – I have to, like – this guy's not going to strike me out here. And I think he did the next time. But on this one <laughs> – he didn't. So the I, weight, though, I was, like, talking- yeah. I was just like, that was just me committing to like barrel on the ball. Yeah. And I mean, you did like just you got enough of it. But like I, I try to emphasize this to people is like 99 percent of baseball players hit the ball like this. It is a routine fly ball. It's a straightaway left field. I know you're not going to gas yourself up, but I'm just going to say matter of factly that is that is the case so you know that you only have to do this and i say only it's still hard as shit but like you only have to do this to hit the ball out you don't need to hit it 115 every time uh that's something that like that has to give you some confidence right like knowing that you can do this and hit a freaking home run i mean look at the trajectory of this ball it's legit straight up in the air That was also, I mean, yeah, Montgomery had a very nice, nice little porch and left. I think it says 314. That homer was probably 324, maybe. Um, but, yeah, you're right. I mean, I think uh, I definitely got, like, very, very, like, it's not that I wanted to hit a home run every time. It was just, like, I felt like that was all I could do. So I like, I didn't, I, by the end of the year, I didn't remember what it was like, like a single type swing. Nice. I think it was just about 69. <laughs> just about. It yeah. doesn't give, I don't think it gives me, it was, oh, you, you do get the launch angle actually. I, I, I take it back. I have one more for you because I think this one is also super sick. And this is another back hipper. So I want, I want to wrap up with this one right here. Um, and we'll get better at this next time we do it. I mean, I thought we were doing a pretty good job. It could have went a lot worse. Um, this is why you were still in Beloit. Uh, we're just going to figure out the delay here. Uh, but, and I'll have better videos queued up and stuff like that for next time. But this one is crazy. Not too bad. Left center, you, you're you just behind the ball here. Like you, you could just see the weight back. And and then you have that, that toe up finish, which I think kind of tells on you in a positive way right there like talk a little bit about this swing and how like is this kind of what you're looking to repeat yeah i remember this i remember with the field for this game like what i was thinking and it's pretty funny like i didn't even nothing to do with the back leg nothing to do with back hip i remember like in bp all i was thinking about was like this hand load like my hands were going down and I wanted to make sure they were on the way up as the pitch was coming in. So like I did like a little pump. It was like to, it was like a timing mechanism more than anything. So like I wanted to pump them down, and you can see like they do a little this. And like in BP, all I was doing was like when he got the pitcher got to here, I want to make sure they were like on the way up. And that just like I don't know. That, that just goes to show you like this is these are things I thought about like that were just like the wrong things. I mean, it worked. That was the like, problem. Was like I, I would find some. And it would work. 
but yeah, like you shouldn't be thinking about what your hands are. Their hands are inconsequential. Like they should be, they should happen as a result of like what you're doing with your lower. I mean, obviously hands are important, but I think, and that's why like it didn't work. It didn't last. I think my next game didn't go well, or I don't even think I, I don't body, know, I another hit this game, but I mean, yeah. The body there is yeah, just like, that's so the position. That, yeah. Absolutely. And I think like that's just that's just like what I need to replicate with other reasons. Oh yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah. I just saw that. Um Smoke will be back. Smoke was great. He was um he's good. He was really laid really laid back. Like a really laid back guy. So like it was very it helped a lot with like, you know, you're in double A and like it's overwhelming obviously to go from high to double A and like a lot of change and um everyone light in a way. Like he doesn't really he's not super like hands on, like he doesn't really you know, he doesn't like build anything up or or take anything too seriously. Um so I mean he helped me in that way that he was just uh kinda let me like figure it out on my own, like didn't force anything didn't like put a lot of pressure on me he's kind of like yep yeah. it's like you're gonna be in there they brought you up like they want to see you play here so like yeah just do your thing and then i thought that was cool that was just, wasn't what i expected you know I, I didn't i knew he was the manager but i never had played for him really so um that that was cool of him to like that's uh is that you know, Justin at the home smoke? when you when you're making a try no 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 i forgot uh Oh no, Smoke. The Justin Smoke was S M. That's it. his nickname is Smoke. His real name is Zach. Yeah, yeah. His nickname is Smoke, and like, uh, so everyone calls him that. I think his real name is wow. Kevin Randall. Maybe. Kevin. I don't actually know. That's, We'd never use. Smoke. Never would know his real name if you're on the baseball field. <laughs> you just smoke. only know him as Smoke. I'm sure there's. Um, a- your your yeah. recall is pretty crazy. Yeah, and that's there's something some I want. I haven't heard it yet. Yeah, your your recall is pretty crazy, and that's something I think is really gonna obviously benefit you as as you continue to just learn more about approach and hitting. I just want to see. So your buddy Jack yeah, Lebowski, former teammate Lebowski. at Duke, he gave you some fits this year, but you did get the best of him in this one. Do you remember the velo? Yeah, he did. off the bat, the velo off the bat of this home run. It was an eighty-five mile an hour cutter, and it was one ten. Off the bat to center. I believe it was 85 Eight, mile an hour cutter. 84 Didn't mile an hour cutter, 110 off the bat to dead center. Yeah, your recall is crazy, dude. Got some like Sean McVay going on. Some good stuff. Fair. Um, I guess, I guess track, man. Uh, dirty. dirty. <laughs> well, that. Uh, well, that yeah. I think, I, think he, like, I think he threw me a bit on that one. Yeah. Play it one last time as we wrap up here. But I mean, that plays, right? That That'll play. Yeah, that swing will play. Dead central. <laughs> I was so happy that I got him once at least. He definitely he won the season battle. Yeah. Because I faced him like six times. I think I was over five until then. Maybe more. He he's like but, deceptive so, yeah. too, right? Ended, another ra- I another raise at that guy. Dude, yeah, yeah. Good year. He had a good year. Very so, good whoop, mix whoop. guy. Yep. Good change up. Sinker. Slider, good pitcher. So, I mean, we'll we'll have. I mean, I guess if if people are in this right now, we have the episode of the call up dropping tomorrow, where we talk a lot about the whole season, and everything. That's why we're kind of just keeping it uh, on what's on the video right now, and uh, not talking too much about the season. But uh, as we wrap up here, uh, for those who might be in in this live, what are you uh, what are you kind of looking forward to the most as we get into the season? Uh, and, and some of the adjustments that you've made, and, and what are you just mo- most amped about uh, for 2022? Um, I think just like just to get back to competing, like just to not be so in my head about 20 different swings and 20 different loads, and get back to like the art of just like preparing for a pitcher and. Not that I didn't, you know, I watch video on pitchers more than anyone, but I think like 
it, it, a lot of it went for was like wasted on me just like getting in the box and being like so concerned with how my swing was unfolding and if it felt good and that's why like i feel like i didn't compete well with two strikes like i i didn't i didn't give in per se but it was just like i didn't do all i could to like you know get the most out of every at bat and i think like that was that was the thing i think it was just it happened with uh wanting like so bad to like have the right swing and the right swing every time which is like it's not going to happen that way it never does so like i think i'm looking forward to like rebuilding you know how i used to compete you know back before last year and i think like being being a lot more consistent with my setup and everything that's all going to help that but like i'm just looking forward to getting after it again playing again yeah you know I, i'm most excited because you know, again i'm, I'm going to say things that like you're not going to plug up your, you know, yourself and not going to gas yourself up here. Uh, but th the thing is, is you have a really good ability to feel out a pitcher and to, you know, you really understand how a guy's going to attack you. Like you're a smart dude who gets the game, but I felt like most of the season you were competing against yourself because you were trying to find all the right moves and you were trying to find all the things that were going to work for you. You didn't even have like the bandwidth left to be able to actually focus on the pitcher and focus on how you're going to be attacked. And I mean, especially when you were in high A towards the end there, like every team is game planning for you. You're the guy that's leading the minors in home runs at that point. So I'm really excited to, to see how you're going to really be able to take it in stride this year. Now that you found those moves that work, found the swing that works for you and can really focus on, you know, just game planning for the opposition. And, and I'm really pumped to see what you got going on this year, but Thank you for doing this with me, Griff. We're going to we're gonna get better. We're going to do this a few more times, especially as the season goes on. Uh, for the all the home runs you're going to hit, all the big things that you do, we'll be able to pull that and uh, have the video in front of us here. So I'm super amped to be able to do that uh, and do some more of these breakdowns. We'll have better Bonds video than a video that you took of your laptop with your phone. I think we'll do better than that next time. But this still works. This still plays. And uh, in summary, last thing, final thoughts, Barry Bonds, Hall of Famer or no? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think like it's, it's a shame that he's not, it's a shame. And I don't think, I don't think he will be, but like, I think like it's a travesty that like the greatest, the greatest, the single greatest mechanical swing, baseball swing ever efficiency wise. Not just like strength wise, not like steroid wise, the greatest mechanically efficient baseball swing is not in the Hall of Fame, and like never will be. Apparently, I think that's there. You go. Yeah, I mean, you, you're not you're not gonna your steroids. Yeah, I, I'm not at all condoning steroids. It sucks that he did them, um, but I think like it's still you just can't you can't teach can't that, teach that. Even with the and, and you can't so. you can't. You can't intake that either. You you can't you can't inject that. You can't inject that. It doesn't work. Uh, but I just had to end on that because that's a consensus over at Just Baseball. We're all Barry Bonds Hall of Fame guys. So I'm um, glad glad we got you on the bandwagon. Griff, best of luck, dude. Uh, keep rolling. Uh, really excited to do this with a fresh set of 40 home runs next year that we can go over as well. Uh, but we'll, we'll we'll do this again soon. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was fun.